This could be the moment we've been waiting for The chance to feel alive Nothing's gonna stop us, nothing's gonna top this Nothing like we've ever seen Good morning, SAS EOF Incoming Scholars. Welcome to our Student Parent Summer Institute Orientation. I'd like to welcome you all here and introduce our first speaker, our director, Dr. Michelle Shostak. Good morning, EOF scholars and family members. We are delighted to be presenting to you this morning. Congratulations on your admission to Rutgers University through the School of Arts and Sciences Educational Opportunity Fund Program. You've been admitted to Rutgers University through the EOF program, and we have every expectation that you will demonstrate your motivation and readiness this summer to continue here in the fall. The Summer Institute is about demonstrating your motivation to be an EOF scholar. This was a very competitive admissions year, you have shown tremendous potential as high school students, and we have every expectation that you will be with us in the fall. This year was, as I said, a very competitive applicant poll. We had nearly 900 students apply, and of those, almost only 600 were admitted, about two-thirds of our applicants this year. So if you were admitted, you should give yourselves a round of applause and congratulations. The School of Arts and Sciences EOF program is the largest at Rutgers and the largest in the state of New Jersey, serving over 1,200 EOF scholars who are in five different schools. Three of those schools admit incoming first year students. So this summer you will be among students entering the School of Arts and Sciences, the Rutgers Business School and Mason Gross School of the Arts. In preparation for the Summer Institute, we're at June 18th right now and happy Juneteenth to everyone. Everyone at this point should have taken their placement tests. We need those results to register you for your summer classes. If for any reason you have not taken your placement tests, you need to speak to your counselor right away because next week I'm sending a list to the registrar's office. And if you don't have a placement test, we won't be able to register you, as I said, for this summer. So take care of that. 
if you are an incoming student to the School of Arts and Sciences, you should have received an invitation to go to our Academic Planning and Advising Days Canvas site. That's where you will fill out complete the modules and fill out the paperwork for your for your fall first year schedule. If you have any questions, you could certainly reach out to your EOF counselor to complete the forms. If you're a Rutgers Business School student, you will also be attending your school's academic advising and planning day. So please feel free to again, reach out to your EOF counselor if you have not received information on that or if you have any questions. It's important that we have some information from you in order to begin the Summer Institute. After I'm done speaking, you'll get to hear from Ms. James, who'll talk to you about the financial aid confirmation process. But for now, all of you should log into our website, saseof.rutgers.edu, to fill out our summer information form. Mrs. Lee will tell you a little bit more about what's entailed, but we need all of these components in place in order for you to begin the Summer Institute. It's important that each of you go to the enrollment pathway to upload your picture, which will create your Rutgers University ID card. So again, if you haven't done that already, please take care of that at the end of the day today. In order for you to be able to participate in your Summer Institute courses, you need to have a working laptop computer with a microphone and a webcam. We're often asked if Chromebooks are okay, and unfortunately, you're not able to use those during the Summer Institute because they're not compatible with all of the software we use. There are some camera issues, so it's important to have a laptop. We understand that finances are an issue for all EOF scholars. So if it's a particular hardship for you, please let your EOF counselor know. We want to try to work with you to enable you to make this purchase that you will need for both Summer Institute and beyond as a Rutgers University student. This summer, our Summer Institute is taking place virtually. It begins on Tuesday, July 6th, and it runs through Friday, July 30th. During that time, you will have a pre-instructional week where you'll have the opportunity to get to know your professors, make sure that you're properly registered for classes, able to access the software that you'll be using this summer, and then classes officially start on Monday, July 12th. So it's a four-week program. Because this program is a condition of your admission to Rutgers University, it's very important that you don't schedule any vacations or non-essential events during this time. You will be taking three courses this summer where you will earn credits toward your Rutgers degree. And these courses will appear on your official university transcript with letter grades. Every student will have a writing course designed to prepare you for your fall writing course. So even if you've already earned AP credits or the equivalency of expository writing, you will still take writing with us this summer. All EOF scholars will take a math practicum course also to prepare you for your fall math course or any quantitative requirements you will need for both School of Arts and Sciences, Rutgers Business School, and it's helpful even for our Mason Grove students. And finally, all students will take a first year experience course that is taught by your EOF counselor. Each of these courses awards one degree credit. So if you successfully complete this summer, you will be starting the fall semester with three credits toward your university degree. Things to keep in mind. As I said, the Summer Institute moves quickly. You are earning college credits. Missing one day of the Summer Institute is like missing three days of classes during the semester. So if you have, as I said, vacation scheduled over the summer, if you have a driving test scheduled over the summer, please reschedule those things. If you have any special learning or medical needs, 
please let your counselor know. They will help register you with the Office of Disability Services. It works a little bit differently in the university environment. So even if you had an individualized educational plan and IEP in high school, you need to fill out the paperwork for Rutgers University. And again, your counselor will assist you. As you've now heard me say on several occasions, your EOF counselor should always be your first point of contact. You will have an opportunity after this live stream presentation to go into a breakout room with your EOF counselor. So I hope, as I always do, I keep a pad right beside me with every piece of information. Take notes, bring those notes to ask questions of your counselor when you meet today. Our counselors are always accessible via email, via text messaging, and, you know, of course, via appointments with the students. So anytime you have a question, the counselor will be the person to help guide you with the resources to assist you at Rutgers University. At this point in time, because we're in this live stream environment, we'll have an opportunity to meet during the breakout session for questions and answers, but it now gives me great pleasure to introduce Ms. Linnell James, our Senior Program Coordinator for Financial Aid, Outreach, and Recruitment. Good morning, EOF scholars. My name is Linnell James and I'm the Senior Program Coordinator for Financial Aid Outreach and Recruitment. My main role in SAS EOF largely consists of overseeing the EOF verification process. This is to confirm that all of our applicants are eligible to receive the EOF services. Now, the EOF verification process requires that your family's household size, income, and assets are documented for two years very thoroughly in your very first year. Now, in order to complete this process, you met when you applied with admissions, they reviewed your family's 2018 income. Currently, the Office of Financial Aid is reviewing your 2019 income. This is the process that we are all in right now. The Rutgers Office of Financial Aid EOF counselors, Ms. Ebony Camacho and Ms. Jeanette Diaz are tasked with reviewing every single document to verify your eligibility based on the state's requirements. They review the forms in the order that they receive. Should your submitted information prove that you're not eligible for EOF, Rutgers admissions will evaluate you for non-EOF admissions. Now, we understand that this process can be overwhelming and confusing. Your EOF counselors have been working tirelessly to contact you via email, Zoom appointments, phone, and text to help you complete this process. They are your first point of contact and, we, and will be your biggest advocate to Rutgers from now on. So your job is to respond to them in a timely manner and to provide the information as accurately and quickly as possible. Because we are the largest program in the state of New Jersey and in the university, in order for all of you to be confirmed in time to start the summer program, you need to submit your documents when requested. This is not something that you can wait to do last minute. I want to thank many of you who have worked diligently to submit their documents and have been communicating with us continuously throughout this process. But some of you do need to step up your game. You are now college students, and while you need your parents' assistance through this process, you should be taking the initiative to handle your financial aid affairs. The EOF uh, verification process is ongoing. At any point in time, documents can be requested of you, or you may be asked to resubmit unclear information. The process is completed when you receive an email or a text message from me notifying you that the grant will be added to your account. I have a couple of reminders. Um, on all forms, when asked, parents and student signatures must be provided. If you cannot sign the form online for any reason, you must print out the form, sign it, and then scan it back into the Rutgers system. Now, you all have smartphones, and believe it or not, they're all capable of scanning PDF files. Your EOF counselors also have what's called DocuSign links to allow you to sign the forms electronically. So if you need that, email your EOF counselor and explain your situation and the information will be provided to you. Make sure you upload completed forms. 
make sure there's not missing uh, any missing information. Again, I want to stress that the PDF files must be submitted. We've received pictures and Google documents, which are not always compatible with the Rutgers system. So make sure that you submit the file in the correct type. And if you're scanning a document that's double-sided, don't forget to scan the back pages. In addition, many Rutgers forms like the asset verification, the number and household form, you might be missing some information. Every single box needs an answer, whether if it's zero or NA, if it does not apply to your family. So not only do we verify information that you did receive, uh, income that you did receive, but also income and resources that you did not. For example, um, if your family is asked to provide proof of Social Security and Medicaid, and that's something you did not receive, you need to provide a signed statement of explanation to confirm that your family did not receive these resources. So do not skip any questions or documents that do not apply to your family. You still need to respond. The loan applications, um, the master promissory note and the entrance counseling, as well as the work study job applications do not play a role in the EOF verification process. So those documents do not need to be completed at this time. The IRS forms, however, are required. Do not submit your parents' 1040 tax returns to the IRS, I'm sorry, to the Office of Financial Aid unless requested. The state of New Jersey requires the tax return transcripts to complete the EOF verification process. All students who did not file are required to provide proof that they did not file taxes. This document is called the verification of non-filing letter. Do not submit a signed statement or the IRS order form, the 4506T to Rutgers, because this will not complete the process. Students and parents must first try to download the forms from the IRS website. If you are unable to download the form from the website, you must make an appointment with the IRS to get the document in person. I stress this um, for you to get an appointment because the IRS will not always respond to your request for documents by mail. It happens all the time, year to year, regardless of the present pandemic. An appointment date is the only way to guarantee that you will get the form in time to be confirmed for EOF and to start the summer program. Now, many students have expressed their frustration in trying to get to the IRS to speak to them on the phone. You do need to keep calling. You will eventually get through. Call early in the morning, 8.30 a.m. is the best. Some of your peers are going to the IRS in person to make their appointments. Some are even traveling all the way to New York to get their documents because they understand the urgency of the situation. So you need to be expending the same type of energy to get your forms. Sample images of what the IRS forms look like are available on our website. You can go to saseof.ruckers.edu, and that's under the Summer Institute tab. Uploading, the, uploading and faxing are the main methods of submitting the documents. So reach out to us for assistance if you have any issues. With everyone in EOF submitting all their documents at the same time across all three campuses, um, sometimes the systems can get overloaded. So you may get some error messages or, while using the online links. Keep trying. Make sure the web browser you're using is Firefox if you continue to have error messages. Um, if you do, then reach out to your EOF counselor and we can provide some additional assistance. Now let's talk about requests for extensions. The June 14th deadline was the extension from June 1st. So if you have not submitted all of your documents as of today, it is overdue. Um, unless you're admitted to Rutgers within the last two weeks, we're willing to work with you. Extensions are only given in cases where students are having difficulty receiving the IRS documents, and you can provide a confirmed IRS appointment date. Every other form that's in your portal, all of the Rutgers documents, proof of untaxed income, those should have been submitted by June 1st. Unless you have a new request in your account, then that should be submitted within 24 hours. So all of you today have some homework. If you have missing items, 
they should be submitted before the day's end so that all, the Office of Financial Aid can review your accounts and your eligibility within next week. The faster you upload your documents, the faster the financial aid office can review your EOF eligibility and the quicker you will know your admission status. This information is important for us as well as we begin registering you for your summer courses as well as the summer institute tuition. Now, finally, I wanna talk about HESA. Now this is very important. The New Jersey state organization that distributes all of the state aid, including EOF and the tuition aid grants, which is the largest grants in your award letter, they may require that you submit some of the same documentation that you are submitting for EOF verification. You need to make sure that you're submitting these documents to HESA if it's requested. If you fail to do this, your state grants will be canceled. This process can happen every year and it's your responsibility to make sure it's completed. Check your accounts at least once a week and upload any required documents. Visit njfams.hesa.org and contact your EOF counselor if you need assistance. Now EOF is a very special opportunity program and we recognize students with the potential for success. You are smart, you are strong leaders in your community you qualify for this additional financial assistance and academic support based on your family's income. So we're here to support you. This is a very coveted position. Students all across the campus try to apply to EOF every year. Students and family members, I implore you to be diligent and to submit your documents immediately so we can officially welcome you as a class of 2025. Now back to Mrs. Lee. Thank you, Ms. James. Thank you so, so much. Um, so again, my name is Nancy Capasa Lee. I am the Senior Program Manager for our office and I oversee components of our Summer Institute. So you have been communicating with your counselor who's your first point of contact. And then on the back end, there are different people that play different roles in making sure that you have exactly what you need for your summer experience. And so I wanna talk to you about the summer experience. Um, what does it look like? And I know Dr. Shostak kind of shared the academic component and obviously you've just listened to Ms. James about the financial aid forms, but there's a whole other piece to our Summer Institute and that is our residence life component. Now, if the world wasn't virtual at the moment, we would have seen you in a residence hall, but unfortunately that's not the case. So this year we are a virtual residence life experience. What that means is we've hired 15 resident mentors who are like RAs to you, you'll receive an email in the coming weeks with the RA assignment, as well as you'll be getting a virtual roommate. So you'll be assigned a person who you'll virtually be with. And that's really exciting because so many times we hear that students want to still feel connected to Rutgers, connected to the SAS EOF community. And we certainly want to give you that. So you'll get your email so make sure you're checking your emails regularly, right? That's really important to do. And in this email, it'll tell you who your RA is, your resident, um, who your virtual roommate is, and as well, some information about the programming that will happen in the summer. So while you have classes in the morning, right? It's block scheduling. So from eight to 10, 10 to 12, right? You're in your academics and then you break for lunch. Afterwards, you have your first year experience. In the evening, you're going to be doing tutoring for your English and your math courses, and then you're going to be going to your programming. That is mandatory. That is part of your Summer Institute experience. So you have to fulfill all the components of Summer Institute to be able to say you've completed it. So what kind of events are happening? Well, we're putting on all kinds of things like, oh, I don't know, escape rooms that are virtual. We have magicians coming. We have music bingo. We have scavenger hunts. We have all kinds of things that we're working with, with companies and outside vendors. And by the way, right, we've been planning for your arrival. So we are really creating an atmosphere for you that makes you feel like you're a part of a residence hall. Because for the first time ever, you're going to be able to go into a virtual world online where you're going to see a virtual campus and you're going to have little avatars that has your name on it. And you're going to go into the residence hall. And there you're going to find our staff. You're going to go into our office spaces. 
into you know the English department space and you can connect with your tutor there. There's gonna be plenty opportunities for you to interact in a virtual social environment. And we'll also have a dining hall because this year we recognize that we can't provide you a meal plan on campus. So we're gonna be providing you a virtual meal plan. You're gonna be able to go into the virtual world in the virtual dining hall click on a plate of food and guess what? It's gonna take you to a link to Grubhub. And we're gonna be providing you a Grubhub meal every day when the Summer Institute starts. I think that's a really great deal. Of course, when you successfully um, finish participating in our Summer Institute, we'll send you your summer shirt, your summer mask, your certificate, because we really want you to excel and enjoy the experience fully. So you've heard about the computers, talk it out more with your counselors, parents. Uh, when I wrap up, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that in our parents' room and I'll tell you what that means. We're having and giving you an opportunity because that is what EOF is. You've heard Ms. James say it in a nice way and you've heard Dr. Shostak say it in a nice way. So let me say it in a way that is the other side. We are an intrusive program because we believe in your success. We want you to do well. In order for you to do well, we are going to give you every opportunity and resource that we can and available to you. But that's only one half of the coin. You, the participant, are the other half. So you have to make sure that you're doing things on time. There's no excuse if right now you have not completed summer forms. There is no excuse for not doing it. It's three forms online on our website. And I know that you've had communication with your counselors because I really trust and believe in our staff. And I know that they've been reaching out to you and they've told you to do these forms. I have reached out to some of you who haven't done them. So if you haven't done them while I'm speaking, you should be doing them right now. It's three forms online on our website under the Summer Institute tab. You have to hold yourself accountable as well. In addition to that, you have to check your emails. You have to make sure you're on top of it. You are now a scholar. That is a title that is a big deal. And the holder of that title, um, there's a standard, right? And so we're going to hold you to that because we believe in your success, but we need you to believe in it too. So it's very important that you know that we're going to do whatever we can to create this great SAS EOF community. We're a very large community, I'm sure. In watching the opening video, you've got to see just how big our Summer Institute classes are. And if we were all together, that one picture of everyone in red shirts sitting on those steps, well, that would have been you. And we will come back to that one day and take that picture. But for now, we're gonna experience this together and virtually. I am really excited to see you guys uh, in the virtual world. I do hope that you enjoy it, um, that you learn from it, and that you are participants in the experience because that is important as well. So having said that, we always partner with some great campus partners on campus. And one of them is our counseling services. So I'd like to introduce our community-based counselor, a member of the justice and equity team for our counseling services CAPS, Mr. Antonio Morales. Mr. Morales, take it away. All right, thank you, Nancy, I appreciate that. How's everyone doing today? Can you put in the chat how you're doing so I can see what's going on out there in these streets? I wanna just see who's gonna speak up in the chat real quick. Any feelings that you're having today? Just put in a feeling that you're having before I start talking. Nobody? Anybody out there? Good morning. <laughs> All right, so it seems like uh, we're not getting too much activity in the chat. So let me just start off by saying that I'm a CAPS counselor. And so before I begin and tell about, talk about what it is that I do as a community-based counselor, I wanna let you know what CAPS is. CAPS is our counseling center. It stands for Counseling, Alcohol and Drug Programming and Psychiatric Services. And what we do is we provide students at Rutgers University with their mental health um, services that they might need in order to graduate. And we understand that a lot of students deal with stress and deal with different challenges, family challenges, challenges at school. And so the counseling center is there to provide you with services so that you can work through those challenges. 
So we provide one-on-one -on -one counseling, we provide group counseling, we provide other services that provide you with the support that you might need in order to make it through to graduation. And we understand and know that mental health is really sometimes it can be uh, a detriment to one's success at a university. And so that's what the counseling center is here to do. Now, like I said before, I'm a community-based counselor. And so what that means is that I go throughout the community and reach students where they're at. We understand that traditionally students don't go to the counseling center because of the stigma associated with mental health services. And so there's eight community-based counselors spread out throughout the campus. And what we do is we go into various spaces. For example, I'm at the Center for Latino Arts and Culture, as well as the Paul Robinson Cultural Center. And what I do is provide one-on-one -on -one therapy there for students, as well as Let's Talk consultations, which is just drop-in sessions where you could come in and have a conversation about whatever's going on in your mind. You don't need an appointment. You don't need to do an intake. You just drop in and meet with a counselor. And so um, you'll hear about that information as we go on throughout the summer programming. You'll understand and know when it exactly it is that we sort of provide those services. Now, oh, look, I'm looking at the chat and I'm seeing people saying good, feeling great, pretty good, I'm good, doing well, amazing, beautiful. So everybody's feeling good today. Okay, beautiful. So here's my question I'm gonna ask you. Um, when you think about mental health, what are some of the things you think about when you're thinking about mental health? I want you to put in the chat some of the things that come up when I say mental health, what comes to your mind when we're talking about mental health? What comes to your mind when you talk about mental health? Depression, triggers, depression, stress, anxiety, stress, anxiety, necessary for survival, stress, anxiety, well-being, stress, trying to stay positive, part of your well-being. Okay. Having to realize things change and you're not alone, anxiety. So if you think about anxiety and depression, stress, right? Um, sanity, right? We usually sort of think about mental health sort of in a negative context, right? When we think about mental health, it's like, what's wrong with me? <laughs> what's wrong with others, right? But I wanna challenge your thinking around mental health. I want you to consider that when you go to a therapist or a counselor, I want you to have it in your mind that when we go and receive these services, it's really about how do I become the best version of myself possible, right? Here you are alive in the world, right? As a human being. So what are some of the challenges that you're confronted by? And how do you overcome those challenges? Because challenges is an opportunity for us to grow. And so a lot of times mental health, right? Like anxiety or depression and the, the sort of words you were using in the chat, right? Can sometimes feel like that's like stuck to us or it defines us, but actually that's not the real truth about the situation. The question you, you wanna ask yourself is how do I overcome this, right? But inside of overcoming this, you have an opportunity to now become a better version of yourself or the best version of yourself possible. So whenever you seek counseling services or therapy, I want you to consider that it's really a conversation around self-mastery. Now, self-mastery is not an easy thing, right? Like that's not something we just like sort of stumble upon overnight. It's practice, right? And along your journey, a mental health provider can be sort of like training wheels on a bike. Like if you ever try to ride a training wheel, right, a bike with training wheels, and then you can't sort of balance yet because you haven't sort of gotten your balance. It's the same thing like when you're a human being, right? Sort of understanding what it is about yourself that needs to be balanced, right? And how do you sort of perfect your sort of ride down your road or down your path? And so you can use a mental health provider as your training wheels. And the more you develop your self-awareness and you practice self-mastery, then you become the source of your life. 
So no matter what challenges that you might be experiencing in the moment, you understand and know through your experience as you practice this, right, with training wheels, how to overcome. So that's a conversation that I, I usually have with students around mental health, because it's super important to sort of reframe how we think about mental health and mental health. And instead of pathologizing ourselves with our normal human being experiences, we can challenge ourselves and consider how is it that I become the best version of myself possible? So I just wanted to share that with you because I understand that mental health is like this big booming conversation these days. Is like the thing, right? But it's always sort of framed in a pathology, sort of pathological way. And so, and just so you know, um, again, I'm at the Center for Latino Arts and Culture and the Poor Robeson Cultural Center, the two cultural centers that deal with primarily Latino identified or Latinx students and Black or African American students. And um, one of my commitments that I have is serving Black and Brown students in particular and other students of color and sort of understanding the impact, the adverse impact that, that white supremacy has over us. So if you ever are looking for me, you ever wanna have a conversation, I might do some programs this summer um, with the UF um, Institute. So you can sort of find me there as, as I find out the information as we move forward, you'll find out about that stuff. And if you wanna find out more about um, CAP services, you can go to health.ruckers.edu. That's health.ruckers.edu. Anyway, that's my spiel for today. It's Friday, you know what I'm saying? So I'm getting on weekend mode real quick. And uh, I wish you all the best. Good luck to you and your program and enjoy the rest of your summer. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Morales. We really, really appreciate you coming. So these are just some of the campus partners, right? That we work with throughout the summer, but then throughout the year as well. And we just want you to know that. So. Um, so grateful that he's able to share the opportunities that are offered through him and through CAPS. Um, certainly, um, please, please, please have a conversation um, with your counselors. Uh, you know, if you need services or think about services, or if you just want to chat with Mr. Morales, um, and they will connect you. Uh, now for some housekeeping things. As you saw, you're watching the live stream, and above the live stream is a virtual check-in. So I need you to make sure that as a student, you've gone in and you've checked in for today. Super important for you to do. So if you haven't done it, as we're speaking, go ahead and click the virtual check-in. Um, it'll open another tab and you can check in very quickly so that I know that you were here today. This is not the end of our orientation because after I'm done speaking, okay, below me, there are some images and those images um, are going to be of your counselor. So you've been assigned a counselor, you've communicated. When I close out this live stream, you'll click on your counselor's images. And, and for Mr. Frazier's students, you'll see a passcode. Only for Mr. Frazier's students, you'll need that passcode. For every other student, just click on the image and it'll take you to the student um, room that will be directed for your counselor. So it's very important that after I'm done speaking, you do that. Don't do that now because the counselor isn't ready for you. If you're a parent and can access another device, please, I implore you to join us for our parents' sessions. So they'll go on simultaneously while the students are meeting with their counselors going over information. We'll have a way for parents to speak to us. So if you're a parent who wants to hear the parent room in English, you'll click on Ms. James's image. If you want to hear it in Spanish, Si usted le quiere escuchar en español, está un cuarto allá para ustedes también with Mr. Enriquez. So you'll click on Mr. Enriquez's image. At this point, we are going to thank you for the opportunity to meet with us today for orientation so you have a better sense of what is about to happen to you in a, just a couple of weeks. I can't believe it. Um, for anybody who um, celebrates Father's Day this weekend, um, happy Father's Day to you on behalf of our office. Please, at this time, feel free to click on your students, uh, on your counselor's images. Parents, you can click on Ms. James or Ms. Enrique's image. If you're not clear on who your counselor is, which I'm not sure that 
that's an issue at this point, the live chat will still be available. Ms. Marte is checking and will assist you to tell you who your counselor is. But at this point, you should know, you should have received emails um, and all that stuff. So again, you have some homework to do. The day is not over for you just yet. You have some meetings to go to right now. I look forward to seeing the parents in the parent room. Thank you so much. Have a fantastic day. Um, and happy Friday as well. So I'll be waving now and I'll be seeing some of you shortly. Bye.